So here we go again. Uh, there's an attack in Brussels, so it's got to be Obama's fault. Now, if you wanted to make a policy argument that we have dropped too little bombs, you'd be tough pressed to do that, given that the Air Force is saying we're almost out of bombs. That's how many bombs we've dropped on ISIS and on, on and in different Muslim countries. Okay, if you want to make the argument that we've dropped too many bombs, I think that's a fair argument, and we could have those arguments. If you want to make an argument that there should be a better strategy, I, I'll join you on that. And now there could be a conservative version of that, there could be a liberal uh, version of that. But here's an argument that doesn't seem to make much sense. Uh, President Obama happened to be in Cuba, hence it's his fault. Of course that's the direction they're going to go. First of all, President Obama says something incredibly reasonable, very benign comment uh, after the Brussels attacks. He said, this is yet another reminder the world must unite. We must be together, regardless of nationality or race or faith, in fighting against the scourge of terrorism. Now I've never heard anything more reasonable in my life. It's, it's but it's I don't give him too much credit for it. It's a very normal thing you'd say after a terrorist attack. Everybody would say it. The Republicans would say it. Democrats would say it. I hope Republicans would say it if they were in charge. Um, but no, that got attacked. It's not enough. Say radical Islam because if you wave a magic wand and say Shazam Shabam radical Islam while you're in Havana, it'll ma magically disappear. Come on, we're humoring these idiots. These guys who think that if you just say a couple of words, it gets better overnight. It, there's no, you don't need strategy. You just need to blame one group of people. Yeah, that's a brilliant strategy. But getting beyond that, uh, they they got focused. The conservatives did, and uh, the, he's in Cuba. He's in Cuba. Okay, Mark Thiessen, uh, Brussels under attack. Obama on a tourist trio, or I guess he meant trip, in Havana with his family. Says it all. What does it say? How did he know that they were going to attack Brussels while he was in Cuba in a trip that was planned months ago? If he did know that, then you're on to something. I'd criticize him along with you. But of course he didn't know that. So, I mean, where did you find out the news? Today I found out the news while I was online during breakfast. Uh, Jank Uger having breakfast while the Brussels bombing is happening. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Where were you when you found out? <laughs> now we're going to nitpick where people were when they found out the news. He's in Havana with his family. What did you want him to do? Tell his family, get the hell out of here and put him on a boat. I can't be with you. I can't be with you. There was a bombing in Brussels. They're, they're lunatics, man. They want to criticize Obama over everything. There's so many legitimate things to criticize Obama over. And look at what these idiots do. Okay, Richard Grinnell, terrible optics. ISIS attacks Brussels and Obama's with the Castro brothers in Cuba. Those two things are wholly unrelated. So on the one hand, he got rid of a policy in Cuba that hadn't worked in over 50 years. How many decades did you want to go before we came up with a new policy in Cuba? But that's the thing, that's a Republican mindset, which is if you got a policy that doesn't work, war on drugs, or embargo of Cuba, uh, bombing of ISIS, or, or bombing of the Middle East overall, who cares that it doesn't work? Just keep going in the same direction because we're all lunatics anyway. We're never going to learn. If we've got a wrong policy, double down, right? So he's in uh, Cuba dealing with the debacle that has been our policy in Cuba for over 50 years. This bombing happens to happen at the same time. Oh, yeah, with the Castro brothers. What does that mean? What is the logical nexus between those two things? Nothing. Okay, uh, Jim Garrity, pretty sure I said his name wrong. Obama's G20 trip continued as planned after San Bernardino attack. Uh, why would we expect Cuba trip to change after the Brussels attack? So Jim, what do you want him to do? So uh, rush over to Brussels right now. Hey, uh, I, I can't stay in Cuba anymore. There's a terrible bombing. Get me a force one. We're going to Brussels. How much you want to bet that if he did that, they'd be like, oh, just going for a photo op. What's the point after the bombing already happened? Look at Obama trying to take political advantage of a bombing like this. By the way, I thought that after horrific events like this that there was supposed to be no politics. Like for example, after the mass shooting after mass shooting, they say, hey, 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 don't blame anybody. Don't play the blame game. This is not time for politics. How dare you politicize it? Now there's a bombing in Brussels. They're all over politicizing in the most preposterous ways you've ever seen. Then we go to Steven Crowder, at least this guy is an admitted joker, a uh, clown. He says, uh, hashtag Brussels, please let this be the day Obama grows a pair. Steven, uh, Obama's, according to the Air Force, dropped over 20,000 bombs on ISIS. 
and he's dropped so many bombs uh, that the Air Force is complaining that we're running out of bombs. What else would you like him to drop? Oh yeah, if he grew a pair of balls, yeah. It's easy to be stupid, super easy to say comments like that. Uh, oh yeah, if, you know, we should have gotten more bombs and dropped 40,000 bombs, then that would work. <laughs> I'm so tough, I'm so tough, I have balls. Congratulations on your testicles. <laughs> you apparently have them inside your head too because you don't have two brain cells to rub together. That strategy of bombing, bombing, bombing and then blaming Obama for wherever he happens to be when the, uh, when the bombing that you suggested doesn't work, that doesn't help and it's stupid. Okay. Steve Ferguson says, has anyone uh, seen Obama denounce the murders in Brussels this morning? Uh, yeah, all over television must still be reveling in the police state ambiance of Cuba. Okay, now, some claim that uh, he tweeted that before Obama made his official statement. Okay, so what did you want him to do? The, and, and later tweets explained that what they wanted him to do was to get on Twitter like Trump did and shoot off at the mouth before you know the facts. So they blame Obama for getting his intelligence briefing then talking. Well, if you have no intelligence, I guess that makes sense to you. Who needs an intelligence briefing? I don't need no stinking facts. I just need balls. These are the people that we have to debate in this country. Look at how unbelievably unintelligent they are. Oh yeah, he's in the wrong country. Oh yeah, he spoke after he got his intelligence briefing. <laughs> Who needs stinking information? Oh, Castro, Havana. I have criticized President Obama in a thousand different ways on this show, each time showing you facts and policy differences. Now the Republicans largely agree with him on the bombing, largely agree with him on all the other issues like helping the banks and income inequality that he has made worse uh, through their efforts and, and all the different things that they agree on, the trade deals, etc. They can't criticize him on the policy because they largely agree with him on the policy. In fact, in the Republican debates, when Ben Carson, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz and others were asked, what would you do in uh, Syria with ISIS, they largely laid out the plan that Obama's doing. In fact, Carson used an example of what the US government did as the right thing to do. That was what Obama ordered. They agree with him on policy, the policy that isn't working, so they've got to criticize him on nonsense.